You told me that you recently watched the shoot interview we did with Vader and you heard him talking about <laughs> his infamous uh, I love, backstory. I, I like club. Leon. Yeah. Leon's, he's a nice guy. He, and I'm sure he's an even nicer guy now because he was, you know, under a lot of pressure back then and he was uh, a, a moody kind of guy. And uh, I went back and I looked recently, like in this last week, I listened to what Vader said again, Leon. And so what I will tell you about Leon's part, he came into the center stage. I didn't know he was doing photo shoots before that. That was news to me. I take him at his word for that. He was in a horrible mood. Now you have to understand, we're doing television that's gonna air on the Superstation that you're basing your entire pay-per-view and house shows off of. And you got a spot called Interview with Vader to promote whatever it was at the time. And that spot has to be filled sometime in the night. And you're running out of time as a production team, you're running out of time to fill that spot. And since he's in the main event, you can't really replace it. So they, I was the one still running it guys for interviews and it was Paul Orndorff, Terry Taylor, Kevin Sullivan, and uh, Tony Schiavone, who were sort of in charge of trying to figure out what to do because they were desperate to get Vader, who's the one interview they had left. And they originally asked me, go ask Leon that we need to do this promo. It's the only promo we have left. I don't remember exactly what Leon said to me, but it was, it was more of the lines of get lost. And, and, that, and I'm being nice, probably using words I can't use here. And so I went out. Well, I didn't want to stooge the guy off, but they wanted an answer. So I said, what happened? He goes, I don't think he's coming anytime soon. <laughs> they go, why? I said, he just seems to be in a bad mood. And so then Terry Taylor, that part was true. Terry Taylor went. I sort of tagged along with Terry Taylor and he sort of gave the same lip service to Terry Taylor and indicated there wasn't a very positive chance of that happening anytime soon. Well, Paul, who was uh, also part of the team at the time, uh, you know, Paul's like, this guy's being a prima donna. This is wrestling. We got a show to do. He needs to come out and do an interview. Be a big, be a, he's a big star. Be a man. Do the interview. I don't care what's going on in your life. And so he went and he asked, he, him and Vader got into it. They moved into an office where it was just them. Okay. And I heard a lot of back and forth. There was a fight. I didn't see the fight. I'm not going to say I heard the fight. But when Leon, and I, Leon, I love you. I hope you live another 50 years. I'm praying for you. But when he says that the bad arm hit him and didn't hurt him, when Leon White came out of that room, his face looked like it exploded. There was, uh, Orndorff must have got him right in the right place. His whole face, not only his nose and his cheeks, his whole face looked like it exploded. You ever see like uh, the gray and um, black um, bins that they would put like ice in, put water in so that you get, he threw all the water out of one of those bins. It was just ice and melted ice, held his breath probably for about 15 minutes and would go under you know, to try to get the swelling to go down. So, Leon, I love you, but when you said he didn't hurt you, your face looked like it exploded. I'm sorry, that's just the truth. I was asked to tell you the true story, and that is the true story as I've seen it. There's been a lot of controversy of, I guess, maybe Steve Austin started this rumor that Paul was wearing flip-flops. He was. Okay. He was wearing flip-flops, and I think Paul, because Paul did get hit first, apparently. He admits that. I just saw Paul at WrestleCade, and he was telling Bob Wharton's story at the bar. But uh, uh, he admits that he went down, that he got knocked down first, and he says it was because he was wearing flip-flops. I don't know if that's a true story or not. All I know is at one point, Paul Orndorff got one very good punch, and... Leon's face looks like it exploded. I'm not saying that Leon's not a tough guy. I'm not saying that he doesn't remember it the exact way it happened because memory is a funny thing, you know? You like to remember different things different ways. But uh, I but saw- why would he be wearing flip-flops if he was an agent? That's my only, that was one point that Vader brought up, like if he, if he was acting as an agent. Back then they didn't dress up. Okay. No, back then Kevin Sullivan would wear shorts and a t-shirt and uh, you know, he was, Back then, you didn't have to dress up to be an agent. It's not like WWE now or even WCW. Terry Taylor used to dress up. That's just Terry Taylor's style. He's a stylish guy. But everybody else was in jeans and sneakers or, you know, your outfit was your outfit in front of the camera. If you worked in front of the camera, behind the camera, nobody cared. Okay. And was there any truth to the part where Ming held Vader back at the end? Because uh, that was... I think that is true. Yeah. I think that he went in and, and broke it up. Okay. Yeah, Look, yeah. I'm not saying that, that, that Leon White might not have been a tougher SOB on that day than Paul Orndorff, because Paul Orndorff did have a bad show. I'm not saying. I'm telling you that Paul Orndorff got in one good punch, and it made Leon's face look like it exploded. That's all I'm saying.